On February 25th, 2020, undoubtedly a new era for the Walt Disney Company officially began. With Bob Iger stepping down as Chief Executive Officer and effective immediately, Chairman of Disney Parks, Experiences and Products, Bob Chapek, became the new Disney CEO. However, this monumental change will surely have huge, long-lasting ramifications for the direction of the company. So let's dive in and analyze all of that up next. Hi there, Waltoneers. I'm Jack. This is, of course, DSMR Newscast. And let me just start off by saying that this is probably some of the biggest news that we're ever going to cover on this channel. As, of course, in the past, we've covered the $71 billion acquisition of 21st Century Fox, and we've also covered the launch of Disney+, Plus, which were both major strategic market decisions. But this appointment of a new chief executive officer is going to be a news story that's going to be developing over time, especially as we learn an awful lot more about Bob Chapek's critical objectives and main mission as the new Disney CEO. However, that isn't to say that at this current time, there isn't still an awful lot that we can logically deduce and analyze about the current situation and make predictions for the immediate future of the company. So with that being said, let's start off with the announcement itself. As we've known about Bob Iger's intention to step down as Disney CEO for quite a while, as originally his contract as CEO and chairman was to end on June 30th, 2018. But then in March of 2017, Disney extended his tenure through July 2nd, 2019. However, as we all know by now, in December of 2017, Disney bought 21st Century Fox, with one of the main stipulations being from the board of directors that they would only approve the acquisition if Iger stayed with the company in a formal role until the end of 2021 to oversee a successful and seamless acquisition. Therefore, we knew that a succession plan was in motion, and we've also known that Bob Chapek has been the front runner for the position for quite some time, as I reported on this back in a DSY newscast video from late 2017. But what's very odd about all of this is the process for which it was announced, as it came seemingly out of nowhere on a random Tuesday in February. And what's even stranger is the fact that this change is effective immediately, which if you compare this to the previous Disney CEO succession plan from Michael Eisner to Bob Iger in 2005, the announcement was made in March of 2005, with Iger officially assuming the role six months later in September 2005. Now, of course, there are many conspiracies theories flying around online about the timing of this change, with some thinking that it could be because of Iger's previous exploration of a presidential run. However, with primary season well underway for the DNC and no funding raised whatsoever, there is zero chance this is because of Iger's potential political ambitions, at least as far as the 2020 election cycle is concerned. Then there are some other crazy theories about Iger being ill or there being some sort of scandal. And both of those theories are incorrect, as Iger has confirmed that he's in good health. And if there was any type of scandal, then the Disney board more than likely wouldn't want Iger to fulfill the rest of his duties as executive chairman of the board until December 31st, 2021. So that leaves us with the only potential reason for why this was such an abrupt announcement with very little warning. And that's the possibility that this decision to make Chapek the new Disney CEO somehow leaked out early through some sort of communication channel within the stock market. And instead of allowing the news story to dramatically affect the stock price whilst in a vacuum of no communication, Disney decided to try and get ahead of a story and control the narrative. Now, I don't have this confirmed, but it's certainly what has happened in the past with regards to major executive changes at many of the Fortune 500 companies. And this kind of insider stock news even affected the negotiations for 21st Century Fox throughout late 2017 to mid 2018 when Disney found themselves in a bidding war with Comcast. So most likely that's why we received this sudden announcement instead of getting the standard clinical public relations execution that we've become accustomed to from Disney in recent times, like we've seen with big announcements in the past saved for quarterly earning calls. 
But the real reason for why this change is effective immediately is a little more interesting. As according to Iger, there was a meeting with the board, Chapek and himself, before Thanksgiving last year, where Iger expressed that he felt that it was a good time to get the ball rolling on the succession process as he didn't want to run the company any longer, or at least the day-to-day -day operations. So instead of a six-month period like Iger received from Eisner, Iger wanted a more gradual transition for stability. However, he found that it was very important to enable Chapek to begin shaping the day-to-day -day operations and empower him as CEO instead of undermining the decision through Wall Street and investor pressure for a longer search, which would be pointless anyways as an extensive, wide-reaching search for a successor has been quietly in motion for many years. Thus, it makes a lot more sense for Chapek to become the CEO now, with a 22-month long transition period, whilst Iger can turn his attention from the integration of Fox assets and the launch of Disney+, Plus over to the creative structure and strategy of the company, with Chapek. So now that we've explored the timing of the announcement and the process itself, let's turn our attention to Bob Chapek as the new Disney CEO. As Bob Chapek has been with the Walt Disney Company since 1993, three years longer than Bob Iger, who joined the company through the acquisition of Capital City ABC in 1996 and quickly transitioned from ABC president to president of Walt Disney International in 1999. So Chapek's appointment as CEO is actually the the first time since Don Tatum, Card Walker and Ron Miller that a long tenured employee of Disney has become its chief executive officer. However, if you'd have asked me who I thought was going to be the next Disney CEO a few months ago, I would have said it was between Kevin Mayer and Bob Chapek, with my preference at the time leaning towards Mayer because he's the chairman of direct-to-consumer streaming products, which means that he's overseen the development and strategy behind Disney+, Plus, which will be fundamental to the future success of Disney in the next decade. But on the other hand, Bob Chapek is the one candidate with the most diverse and broad portfolio across many different divisions within the company, and also has a proven track record of not just maintaining but also successfully increasing profitability in all his recent positions, which is definitely something that the Disney board of directors and shareholders will prioritize when seeking a new CEO. And then in addition to this, Chapek has the most experience maximizing intellectual property to its fullest financial return, as he oversaw the Disney Vault strategy in the 1990s, led the transition from DVD to Blu-ray in the 2000s, and then also managed the digital distribution partnerships like iTunes and Disney Movies Anywhere. And so if you combine all of that with his years running consumer products and the parks and resorts, it's easy to see why the board of directors chose him as he was the most well-rounded, business-centric candidate for CEO. However, these attributes that have made Bob Chapek such a strong candidate for the role of Disney CEO in the eyes of the shareholders and the board of directors are the very same attributes that have been divisive within the fan community. As there's been two big complaints about Chapek in his current role overseeing the parks and resorts, with the first being the push for financial profitability through cost-cutting measures, which has been seen by some to inhibit the guest experience by affecting the quality and value upon return within the parks. And then also the yearly price increases to the park tickets have led to some uncomplimentary headlines for Disney and even affected the launch of Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland last May. Then the second point is the heavy integration of intellectual property throughout every aspect of the company has made many question Disney's creative direction, as there's a perception that Disney doesn't have an awareness of the balance between IP derivative content versus original creative concepts, which has always been at the heart of the company. But here's the thing about this appointment, as just because Chapek has taken certain actions in the past doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be his strategy for the future. As previously, Chapek has been fiscally conservative and economically frugal to ensure that his divisions remained profitable, or with a potential prospect of maybe becoming appointed Disney CEO. Whereas now that he's in control of the entire company, he has the power to spend and invest in the areas where he sees fit. Therefore, if there's only going to be one thing that you take away from this video for today, it should be this. And that is that CEOs often want to create a long-lasting impact and create their own legacy. And you certainly can't create an individual legacy by only continuing the predecessor's objectives. So personally, I think that we're probably looking at a prolific time 
for the Walt Disney Company in the coming years as we lead up to the 100th anniversary in 2023. And I would bet that we're going to see a big project of some sort in the coming years, as Chapek carves out his own direction for the company. As when Michael Eisner took over, he refocused attention toward the Disney parks, expanding to a third park in Walt Disney World and opening up a resort in mainland Europe. Whilst when Iger became CEO, he acquired Pixar Animation Studios for $7.4 billion. But where Eisner and Iger had critical areas to fix right from the get-go, Chapek has an even greater challenge to overcome, as he has to maintain the hugely successful strategy of recent years, whilst also carving out his own direction and creating his own legacy. And even the most financially minded CEOs like Tim Cook at Apple only forged their own legacy through big investments and big gambles. So to summarise this section, if Bob Chapek only continues to cut costs and increase profits whilst being in charge of such a creative company, then the legacy left will be one of continuance of the Iger era and not a new direction. But now we come to what we can deduce about Chapek's business approach based upon his past decisions. And I think that he'll lean more towards strategic partnerships with other companies rather than acquisitions. As we've seen recently for the integration of the Disney stores within Target, then the partnership with the ride-sharing app Lyft for the minivan service, and the overwhelming growth of consumer product partnerships with brands such as Loungefly and Gucci. However, there are two reservations about Chapek as Disney CEO that have been mentioned within the movie industry with the first being creativity and the second being Hollywood connections. Now the first might not be much of an issue, as Disney has very strong creative leadership nowadays and it never affected Bob Iger, but the second part is going to be something that will take some time, as Chapek may be very used to doing business deals, but managing Hollywood relationships with top talent is a completely different skill. And that's where the 22 month long transition period is going to be useful as Bob Chapek begins to introduce himself to Hollywood. But that's where the title of this video really matters, as this is going to be a new era for Disney, which means that over the next year or so, we're going to see a lot more executive changes. As considering that Alan Horn is 77 years old and has had an extremely successful second act at Disney following on from his early retirement from Warner Brothers, it's no secret that Horn may be stepping down fairly soon as the chief creative officer of Walt Disney Studios. So appointing a strong head of this division will be critical in reaching out to top Hollywood talent, whilst also further developing the tentpole strategy which has been so dominant in recent years. And then the next division where we'll see change will be Chapek's replacement as chairman of Disney Parks Experiences and Products. But this appointment of the next chairman of Disney Parks is going to be more important than ever before, especially with Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration next year and the increasing competitive presence of Universal Studios in Hollywood, China and Orlando with the opening of Epic Universe in 2023. So personally, I would choose an executive with plenty of Walt Disney World and Disneyland experience such as former president of Walt Disney World, George Calagridis. But then again, as Chapek said at a town hall meeting this past Wednesday, there is plenty of talent for this role. So overall, I would say that Bob Iger has perfectly positioned the Walt Disney Company for every success as he leaves. But obviously, it's also too early to predict the success of Bob Chapek's tenure as Disney CEO. But it's going to be an extremely interesting time to be a Disney fan in the next few years. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the company that Walt and Roy found it evolve over the coming years within the entertainment industry. But now it's over to you Walton is. I would like to know what's your thoughts and opinions on Bob Iger stepping down and Bob Chapek becoming the new Disney CEO. Are you excited for the upcoming changes and also what would you like to see Disney do in the coming years? And of course don't forget to put the timestamp for where the hidden Mickey appeared somewhere within this video along with your suggestion or your comment to be in the chance to win one of these official DSMI newscast enamel pins. And congrats Congratulations to this Waltonier here for winning this suggestion from a previous video where we're talking all about the Frozen themes land that's coming to Disneyland Paris. And so that's it for today, so be sure to go ahead and subscribe down below if you're new to this channel. Hit that notification icon so that we always receive an update whenever I release new videos like this one today. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give this video a massive thumbs up as it really does help this channel out. And I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon.